Hello all, and this video that I made about ranking every Premiere Thomas episode, while making that video, that gave me an idea. I can rank every last episode of Thomas, so that, so the last episode of each season. And some of the episodes I watched were in the UK dub, and some were in the US dub. And the rules are that I'll be ranking these by how good they are and bad they are at how good it does as being a last episode of the season, like having a Christmas episode or just sums up the season or gives off a really good conclusion or maybe gives a sneak peek for next season. So now that the rules are established, let's get ranking from worst to best. Thomas's Animal Friends. Oh God. So first thing, I was originally gonna put the Royal Engine here but I realized that that's not how they aired and because it's a double length episode and I'll and I will be using clips from YouTube because of copyright but this episode is sh so the premise premise is silly and why why are they furries I literally stopped halfway through this episode and I don't I've actually finished it recently, but yeah. And then came back the next day. But the worst part is that this is the last episode of Thomas. Well, the OG Thomas. And that is the biggest offensive offender, sorry. You end off a 24 se seasons of millions of people who hold this serial this see this series dearly to their heart and they give us an episode of thomas being a furry <laughs> this episode fiery flynn this episode is a horrible way to end the season because it's dumb bore boring and very slow and why is flynn so stupid and impatient like every other sharon miller character like he just sprays Edward and Gordon, even though they are clearly not on fire. But the worst part is, well... His firebox fire was on fire. on fire. It's not on fire. How can Sharon Miller be this stupid? Like, it's a firebox. It's in the name. And the Diesel's literally put out Thomas's fire. Like, why did you have to call Flynn over? I am just done with, epi with this episode. Let's just move on to the next one. Henry's Magic Box. Oh no. So why is this higher? Because it's a Christmas episode. And I like having Christmas episodes at the end of each season. So yeah. But again, Henry is so stupid. And why does he stress over a box? A box? But this episode just... Like every other Sharon Miller episode is boring and painful to watch. And to see one of my favorite characters being re reduced to this. It's just terrible. Best friends. This is another horrible way to end off the season. Maybe if Thomas and Percy were arguing at the beginning of the season, and then it's resolved at the end in this episode, it would be better. But this episode is just... I don't want my friend to be sad. Then, oh no, why didn't you tell me, Thomas? <laughs> it's just childish drama. And that is not fun to watch. And it's not even interesting. Because you know what's going to happen at the end, of course. It's boring. But most of the same stuff applies to the next one. And that is the Christmas Tea Express. And yes, the title does not relate to the story at all. But the only reason it's higher is because the narrow gauge engines... And because it's a Christmas episode. But besides that, this episode is crap. Just like every other Sharon Miller episode. Well, not every other, but still. And just like every other Sharon Miller character, they're, they're out of character. And Toby and his logic in this episode is very stupid. And Reneas is just an NPC character. So yeah. and But the sunset shot actually looks really good. But the ending is wholesome. And it's the last episode of the Sharon Miller era. 
But that's all I got to say. So next episode is... Percy and the Magic Carpet. Originally, I was going to use this cam recording off of YouTube. Because I couldn't find any other high quality versions. But I found the episode on an episode compilation. Just wanted to say that. First thing. This is higher because I am really nostalgic for this. And Murdoch actually made an appearance. But... Besides that, this is another terrible way to end off the season with an unrealistic, really dumb, and childish premise. Here's the thing. Abby Grant wrote this episode, and I guess she argued with Hit Entertainment just so, we could, so, just so she could have the magic carpet in it. I wish you didn't have to do that, but you did. But she wrote really good episodes like Percy and the, um, and the Oil Painting. And that, the leaf effect is so tacked on. Like, cause you could tell it's just a green screen of leaves flying over the screen, slapped over the episode. But besides that, the characters are somewhat in character. But I do hate how Gordon believes that the carpet is magic at the end. And Thomas had so much time to stop. Or maybe Thomas is just a menace. But this episode is just a frustrating, unrealistic episode. Next one, Diesel Glows Away. Is interesting, but in a bad way, of course. Diesel just wants the other engines to realize that they need him and hides, and that's it, to be honest. This episode is just a nothing episode, but how does Diesel go onto a narrow gauge track tunnel? And there are two tracks? What? Maybe that's why Diesel was so scared. And for once, the background characters have a line. In a dream sequence where there's, where there's a giant cake. But the pacing is bad. And this is and this is kind of confusing to be honest. Even for younger kids it would be confusing the episode. A pretty bad and boring episode to end the season. ding -ling. This is the most nothing episode on, on this list. It's just another three strikes formula episode. But the only plus is that Freddy is the main character. But besides that this is just... A boring, bad, and forgettable episode. All these episodes kind of blend in, to be honest. Hero helps out. This episode is just like the other, other ones. Three strikes, boring episode. But what makes it worse is that Hero is so out of character. But he was in the most recent movie at the time, so that's a point. And it isn't as boring as Dingaling. But besides that, this episode sucks. Thomas and Scarlowe's Big Day Out. This episode is very interesting. It's cool to see Scarlowe's small scale prop with more weathering, which I like actually. But here's the thing it was not Thomas's fault. They gave him an old flatbed that had a rusty coupling. So, how was it his fault when it broke? And Scarly and Scarlowe is out of character and has his stupid stuffy nose voice that Michael Brandon gave him for some reason. It's actually a pretty good ending to the season. And next is Flower Power. This episode is better because Thomas does get back at Diesel and the echo effect when Diesel scares Thomas is actually nice and the atmosphere is really good. But besides that, yeah, another basic episode, but it's 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 really fun to see uh Thomas and Diesel just Trying to scare each other. But an okay way to end season. Mind that bike. This is a pretty good episode. And this episode I never saw as a kid. But I saw it until I was much older. A very uneventful and kind of basic episode. And really, and a really bad way to end the season. But the atmosphere and models are great. Because it's classic Thomas. But not too special. Millie and the Volcano. An interesting episode that has the pair up of Samson, Harvey, and Millie, which is a very interesting cast of characters. And it shows that both sides are in the wrong, which I like. And the build up from the episodes before, with them like bringing all the dinosaurs in, and they finish it in this episode, which is the last episode of the season, of course, which is really great, but not too much to say. A great season ending with a good episode. Thomas's shortcut. It is another random episode chosen to be the last, but feels like a much more younger version of Thomas in a good way, like his original personality. 
and I just love episodes that take place on Thomas's branch line. They're so fun, especially the ones with Thomas and Bertie. And the crash did not go overboard. <coughs> <coughs> the other side of the mountain. <coughs> <coughs> I know I've been not. I haven't been saying too much about these episodes, but there's not that much to say, to be honest. Faulty Whistles. Fun fact, this was an adaptation of Mike's Whistle, but was later adapted again in Season 20. But it, it was a great choice for Duncan to be the main character, and the story is a funny one, but is an okay ending to Season 6, and... The one dislike is that it's a bit unrealistic just to have a piano on a flatbed. And, of course, the grayish season 6. But next is... No help at all. This episode was so hard to watch. It's not on YouTube, and for some reason, it's not on Amazon Prime. Because their episode ordering is so bad. Besides that, I had to take some footage and watch it from Daily Motion. But besides that, this episode is so underrated. It feels like a classic episode, and it gives Timothy more of a character. And it's cool to see Porter and Salty at the quarry, and takes place during another episode, Salty All at Sea, with some nice consistency. With, and that's nice to have some consistency. And the Down by the Docks remix was great and felt like a lot like the Adventure Begins song remix. You're never on your own. It's really home from home. And no one's ever talked about this episode at all. So go check this. Just go, so go check out this underrated episode. Over the Hill, which is an amazing ending to season 20. With it being a winter episode, showing new signs to Steven's character. And them saying they will have an annual race each year, which is cool. Even though they never followed it up because freaking Brubble happened. And the character interaction, specifically the one with Gordon and James, is just great. And it's part of a two-parter. And this is and this is the second part. Part of a Christmas slash winter episode. And it's just great. Snow. Which is another winter episode with Scarloe being a badass. But not even speaking in this episode. And the very funny ending with Gordon and the iconic, legendary snow machine but i don't know why thomas is so mean to percy at the beginning because he had all of this character development through the classic series but then he just just kind of went back to his just being an ass to percy and the crash was actually really cool to see but a great episode and the model work is great too hunt the truck which is out of the big world big adventures era but feels so much like a classic episode with Edward knowing all of Bill and Ben's hiding spots and just trolling them at the end because it's just so great to see Edward like that and seeing him get an, a lead role which he's in character and it being a Christmas episode too and the dream sequence wasn't even that bad great job Michael White now my top five Thomas's Christmas party the first Christmas episode and it does a really good job at it with everyone banding together at the end to make a big Christmas party and everyone wearing Christmas hats. It's just wholesome. But I do wish they adapted the story that gets a flashback. But besides that, the sunny Christmas sets look great. And it's cool to see the season, season one sets with snow on it. A great way to end off the first season of Thomas. Confused Coaches, which ends off the last good season of Thomas, and like other people, including me, believe that this is the true finale of Thomas, with it being New Year's episode, which I think is the only one we've had. I've always loved Gordon Spencer's rivalry, and seeing it come to a nice concluding ending is, is just great, and the antics that they get into in this episode and their interaction are just great and the speed of gordon and spencer going on the main line is just great and super cool to see and the comedy in this is actually really good and well done a little bit goofy at times but a great ending to an underrated season three cheers for thomas 
How does this episode do as being the last episode of the classic era of Thomas? It does a great job. Well, in my opinion, of course. You know I love the Thomas and Bertie stories on his branch line. And how Thomas comes out on top, even though technically he didn't even win the race. The sets are pretty simple, but in a good way. It reminds me of season 1 a lot. And the remix of Let's Have a Race in the Background that continues on for half of the episode is just great. And really catchy. And that ending line is just amazing. A small boy presented him with a gold medal on a red ribbon. You were very helpful at sports day. So we thought you should have a medal of your own, added the boy. My very own medal, said Thomas. Thank you. Three cheers for Thomas, the number one engine. But I still won the race, tooted Bertie. Thomas just peeped happily. A great and underrated episode. I keep on saying great throughout this season, throughout this review. Thomas and Percy's Christmas Adventure. I watched the UK version because the US version got screwed over here. And that's why it's actually shorter. But just watch this video on the Lucky Tug for more information about it and my thoughts on the episode. But this episode is just a charming Christmas episode. Hey, that's a plus. And I love the model work and sets and just everything about it. This The score is great. And this shot of Toby is just breathtaking. And seeing all the sheds inside instead of outside all dressed up is so cool and nice to see. Not too much to say, so yeah. And my number one pick is... Thomas and the Missing Christmas Tree. The first thing is a Christmas episode and nostalgic one for me. And it's kind of like, uh, sorry. And it's kind of like season one's Christmas episode, but way better with the model work, more characters, the atmosphere, and the ending with all the characters from the series, rail and road with Christmas hats and celebrating Christmas. And Santa Claus coming with Harold. And the line that Thomas gives at the end, it's just a great way to end off the season. And I do like the slight bit of humor in this scene with Donald and Douglas looking for Thomas. And this shot of Thomas being pulled out of the snow. I just find it hilarious. Uh, just a perfect example of a way to end off a Thomas season. Thanks for watching. Yeah.